Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made this reindeer headband from scratch. Let's jump right in. I'm going to show you some of the materials that we're going to be using today. Now, um, this is an embroidery machine hoop. If you don't have an embroidery machine, it's okay. You can still follow along with this tutorial. Instead of embroidering the um, antlers, what you can do is just um, either cut them out or get like a st sturdy piece of fabric of your choice. Then here we have uh, my R Fiskers. I have like three sets of them because I'm obsessed with these scissors. And there's just, there's one for like everything you can think of. And then um, I have my hot glue gun, the glue because we're gonna need a lot of it. <laughs> and I have my little headband. It's just like this Scoon, Scoonchi, Scoonsy brand. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's been around forever. And this is a flexible one, so you know. I really like that it's flexible. One thing I forgot to mention was the batting and we're just gonna use this to uh, go ahead and stuff the ears. Now, if you're not using um, embroidery, that's fine. You can just uh, use a piece of sturdy fabric, but this is, if you are following along as an embroidery tutorial, then we're gonna use this to stuff the ears. And here I have um, all the stuff that I picked up to decorate and create the headband and the ears at the fabric store. And uh, if you guys wanna see how, well, no. I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna give you an option. So see how it went down at the fabric store and why I chose these things. Go ahead, show the footage. <laughs> oh, actually I think I really like this one. I'm gonna get two of these. What do you think? So I need something to wrap um, around the headband to kind of bring it to life. This one has red, gold, and green. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Well, of three worlds, I guess. <laughs> There's not two. So I'm thinking either this one or one of these. They're just so cute, I can't, I can't choose which one I want. So I think I'm gonna, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna get all of them for now and then I'm gonna return whatever I don't use. This is for the reindeer ears. I don't want to use just a regular brown because it's going to be kind of boring. So because we have the you know flexibility to be able to use any fabric we want, I'm going to check out some of these patterned fabrics and see which one I like best. Too large, so either something like this with the snowflakes or um, I don't know, I kind of wanted something like red though. I kind of like the plaid. The plaid would kind of be cute, I'm not going to lie. It's very different. Like you never see plaid rain in your ears. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do plaid. Maybe I should have gotten a cart. You're right. <laughs> As you can see, I'm quite the multitasker. <laughs> um, these are really cute. I'm thinking we can do something, like stick these on somehow. Um, there's also green and red, but I think I'm gonna do gold because if I've decided, I've decided on these pom poms. So if I do green and red, it's just gonna be way too much green and red. So I want to add some gold in there. So I think I'm just gonna get one of these little gold ones. Actually, these are a little bit too big. I think the smaller ones are gonna be better. Don't you hate when you only have one thing and then there's only one person in front of you and they have like 20 pieces of fabric to cut and you just have one thing? That's the worst. This is like my story, my life. Every time I come to Joanne's, it's always, oh well. <laughs> the store is like empty, but of course the one person in front of me has like 30 fabrics to cut and I can't wait anymore because we have stuff to embroider. So I'm just gonna put this back and use something that I already own because we're kind of on a time crunch. So I'm just, I guess I'll surprise you guys with what fabric I'm gonna use. All right, so you saw the stuff I picked up at the fabric store and I didn't end up getting the plaid that I wanted because, you know, as I told you there, that there was this lady with like 30 pieces of fabric to cut and I was just, I just had one, she could have just let me go, but whatever. So I ended up, I'm gonna use this one, which I'm actually happy about because it's gonna turn out um, a little bit I think it's gonna look nicer than the than the plaid. First thing I wanna do is create the antlers just to kind of get it out of the way. So um, let's go on over to the machine to see how we make this. So what I'm gonna do today is a technique called in the hoop embroidery. And a lot of people uh, who are new probably um, get confused with what in the hoop embroidery means because you basically embroider everything in the hoop 
But basically what in the hoop embroidery is, is that you, uh, it's just all the embroidery, all the sewing is gonna be done on the embroidery machine. So it's just a way to um, quickly sew something up just using your embroidery machine without having to do any sewing. For embroiderers who are wondering how you can get an in the hoop embroidery design or how you can make one, it's actually pretty simple. Um, the one we're using today is honestly just a running stitch. And um, what makes it in the hoop is the way that you, uh, place the fabric. So I'm going to explain that right now. So what I have here is just a piece of cutaway and I'm going to place my first piece of fabric right over. This right here is called floating. It's just when you place your uh, fabric right over your hoop instead of hooping it inside. And then I have my other piece of fabric right here and I'm going to place it over. And now I want the ears, the patterned part to show obviously. So um, I'm placing it inside upside down like this because when I'm done stitching, I'm actually just going to grab it and turn it inside out. So you'll see if I turn it inside out, this would be the outside of the ears. So now that I have placed my fabric over my hoop, I can just uh, go ahead and trace to make sure that I'm not um, going to hit the hoop and then I can press start. Okay guys, the pie is out of the oven. But okay, this is like stuck. Okay. Okay, so here we have the finished embroidery design. Now I'm just gonna turn them inside out and uh, stuff them. So you guys will see how the ears turn out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the little ears. So I'm gonna cut out the first pair. And I'm not going to cut too close to the stitches because we don't want them to tear. Even though I'm pretty sure this is like a triple um, running stitch. So it has like extra hold. But we still don't want it to tear. So you want to cut like somewhat close to the stitches but not too close. Um, and then I'm going to turn them inside out. Which is going to be a little bit of a hassle but we'll make it happen. Um, and then after that, I'm going to stuff them and then we'll have our finished antler. <sighs> Sad antler falling, but it won't fall when we stuff it. So this is how you turn it inside out. I'm just literally turning it inside out. <laughs> and I scrounged around for some tools to help me do it. So I got this little Allen key. It's going to help me turn this inside out. I'm just picking at it until it goes in all the way and then I can start you know inserting the allen wrench until basically you start seeing a seam so I just gotta keep stuffing it All right, so I went ahead and I stuffed this and turned it, well, first I turned it inside out and then I stuffed it off camera. So I went ahead and stuffed it with some batting, but I wanted it to be very upright so that it can stick on the headband. I added some of these like coffee stirrers. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff this on camera so you guys can see the technique behind it. Oh, and by the way, I used this little thing, this Allen wrench to help me um, turn it inside out and to also help me get the batting in through. So I have basically finished stuffing my antler, but like I said before, it was very narrow. So when you are doing hoop in the hoop embroidery, you should make it a little bit wider. For these purposes, uh, we didn't really have that much time. So um, there were some holes that were that kind of opened up when we were turning it inside out and stuffing it because of um, how narrow it was. If it's wider, you're not going to have an issue. Um, so those little holes, I'm just going to sew them up really quickly with some red thread. Okay, 
Okay, so I finally finished making the little antlers and now it's time for the fun part, which I've been waiting for and I know you guys have been waiting for it too. So let's go on to figuring out how I'm going to get these onto the headband and make them stay up. And then uh, let's see what we do with all the stuff that we bought right here. Okay, so I managed to get it up and I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I just used a lot of glue to make it stand straight up. And um, when we do move it, use it, we're gonna be moving around, but I have an idea for how we can get this to um, stand up straight without um, falling. So I want to, I think I'm gonna secure it with this wire. And let's see how it goes. I'm kind of just gonna Start from the bottom, I guess, and see what happens. So I wrapped it around over, and then I cut it right here, and now I'm going to start again to fill in any extra black space that we have here. Okay, so I finally finished wrapping the entire headband with the wire and then I put two little circles around the antlers to kind of help them stay up and they feel a lot more sturdy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start decorating the headband with little pom-poms to kind of hide the imperfections here that we see with the glue. So as you can see, there's so much that you can do with your embroidery machine. Even this, I just saw something similar at the store and I thought I can totally make those antlers with my embroidery machine. So I went ahead and tried it. So have you guys ever been in a similar situation? What kind of creative projects have you uh, decided to embroider? Let me know in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoyed following me along as I created this project. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. And again, leave a comment if you have any questions on how this was done. Also wanna encourage you guys to join our Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery. I have linked it in the description below. In it, you can ask me any questions and you can also share your knowledge of um, craft, embroidery and custom apparel. So I'll see you guys there and thank you for watching, bye.